Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and wow, part two, I can't wait. Rapture ready. And are you ready? I mean, this is very important. Well, folks, today is going to be a powerful, I mean, this message was one of the stronger prophetic messages that uh, I've preached in the past year to year and a half. Because I think what it does, it encompasses the entire situation of the time we're living in. People know something's happening, something apocalyptic's going on, and, but they don't know what it means and how relevant does it pertain to them personally. Well, I want you to know that in this broadcast, we're going to find that out. So I want you to get ready because it is going to be a powerful show. This is Rapture Ready Part 2, and your life is about to change. So we'll be right back in a few moments with more on the coming apocalypse. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. All right, all right, rapture ready. You know what? We heard from you guys last week. Folks love this sermon. Well, we had to do a two-parter on this. And let me just say, everybody is ready to go to heaven, but not everybody's ready. Let me say that again. Everybody wants to go, but not everybody's ready. You got to get yourself in condition for the coming of the Lord. Now, there's some things that's going to be happening just before the Lord comes. It's not a timeline, it's a sign line. You've heard me say that. And in Matthew 24, listen to what happens. Jesus was asked the question, and uh, when is the world coming to an end? Here's what it says. Matthew 24, verse 3, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. Folks, all of these are the beginning of the sorrows. We're living in this sign line now. We've never seen such many wars and rumors of wars, whether it be China with Taiwan or Iran threatening Israel or, you know, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine or NATO in confrontation with Russia. The whole situation. We've never seen so many earthquakes, We're breaking records year after year with the number of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, typhoons, monsoons, blood moons pontoons, baboons, I don't know. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> We've never seen so many crazy things. I mean, seriously, even the animals are reacting. We all know that Jesus must be coming. But the question is, when? Everybody asks me, the number one question, when's he coming? And my answer is always this, no one knows. They don't ask me, what do I got to do to be saved? That should be the number one question. You've got to become born again if you're ever going to be rapture ready. So in this broadcast, we're going to go to the villages uh, under the big tent at Freedom Fellowship, where we are really giving you part two of that message titled Rapture Ready. Again, remember, it's not a sign line. Every, or, I mean, excuse me, it's not a timeline. And everybody's trying to put a timeline together. And that's where they make the mistakes. Just look at the signs of the times. And you know Jesus is almost here. Let's go now to the Big Tent here in the villages in Florida. 
Matthew 24 also says, Now we learn a parable of the fig tree. Verse 32. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. In other words, if you see the, in the spring, you see the leaves, you know you're getting close to summer. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Amen? The Bible goes on to tell us, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. No matter how many, they're trying to scrub the internet of the Bible. Soon you'll see. My mama told me this when I was a child. She made me memorize 200 memory verses at the age of seven. It was the summertime, and she said, Paul, this summer you're going to learn Scripture. I said, okay. Five verses a day. You go into the bedroom, and here they are, book, chapter, and verse. You memorize these, come back, and repeat them to me. When you're done, I'll let you go play. Mama, it's good for you. Sort of like medicine. It's good for you. So I would go, and I would study, and I'd come back, and I could quote three out of five, and she'd say, go back. And finally, within an hour or so, I could get all five right. The next morning, five new verses. The next morning, five new verses. After the, the, during the course of a summer, I learned 200 memory verses at the age of seven. I said, Mama, why are you making me do this? None of the other kids are doing this. Why do I got to do this? She said, because there's a day coming, they're going to take the Bibles away from us. I said, what do you mean, who's they? She said, I don't know who they are, but they know who they are. And they are lurking, waiting for the opportunity to take the word of God from the people. Folks, it's happened in other countries. And you can know right now, there are some today as we speak, they have been trying for at least a generation to figure out a way. They removed the word of God from our schools. Can you say amen? They took the Ten Commandments off the wall of our schools and our courthouses. They removed prayer from school. They've removed God from all of our curriculums in schools until recently. We finally have a lady over the last 15 or years or so who's able to get the Bible as a curriculum in over 3,000 high schools across America. And Israel Hall is now helping her as he's the vice president of that uh, organization. There is people like uh, Charlie Kirk who is starting what's called Turning Point, who's been going into the high schools creating youth groups. It's turned into thousands of people who are coming to Jesus Christ, and now he's building a brand new high school, the first one of the nation called Turning Point High School. He's going to build that in Texas, and he said once he builds that one, then he'll start building them in every state in America. See, every time the devil thinks he can put his foot on our throat, we stand up and push back. Can you say amen? We're just not going to lay down and let him have it. We're getting rapture ready here. There's no weight going to be on us. There's nothing going to hold us down. There's nothing going to hold us back. We're not going to let the devil get an inch, praise the Lord, but we're going to take a lot of ground for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Amen. Freedom Fellowship is a place where it's so awesome. It's so awesome to come by here, see the flags waving, see, feel that freedom. The name itself tells you you're free. Jesus said, whom the Son of Man makes free is free indeed. Can you say amen? Jesus said, I've come to set the captives free. I've come to give sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the year of jubilee, which is the year of forgiveness of all debt. Can you say amen? And the Bible said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Even Jesus said, I don't know when I'm coming, but know this, I'm coming. And he sits at the right hand of the Father right now, making intercession for every one of us. He's saying, Father, give them a little more strength. Lord, forgive them where they've slipped and fallen, for I've already shed my blood at a cross for their sins. Lord, help their children and grandchildren to come to you. Lord, America's still standing for you. They're coming, there's, there's many coming against them like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard. Lord, stay with them. I'm interceding for the body of Christ. I'm interceding for every one of your children across the world. Lord, just a little more longer, but when you're ready, I'm ready. Can you say amen? 
I sometimes wonder, Brother Melvin, Jesus is sitting there at the right hand of the Father, praying for us, interceding for us. God sits upon his majestic throne, looks down upon a world full of wickedness and sin and abominations, murder and heartlessness and crime. And he, as he sits there on his throne and looks upon this planet, a creation that he made and loves, he can also see the atrocities that man has done upon each other. He sees the deception of the devil. He sees the lies of Satan to try to destroy his people. But at the same time, he hears under his feet, under the altar of God. He says he hears the cries day and night from them that said, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is, which was, and which is to come. Will thou not avenge our blood upon the earth, on the inhabitants of the earth? When will you give us our revenge? How much longer, Lord? And this goes on day and night as God looks at everything happening and his, and his son is sitting next to him saying, Father, I'm ready if you want me to go. And God hears the cries of those that have already been suffered for the gospel. And he looks on the earth and he sees the madness. What's keeping him from saying to Jesus, it's time, go get him. What would you do? You and I wouldn't sit through an hour of that. We couldn't handle 10 minutes. We would say, this is enough, this is crazy. And you hear these pleas. But you see, we're not God. Our grace runs out. His never does. Our mercy is pretty good, but it ain't that good. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The only thing that's holding God back from turning to his son is he spoke in his word certain prophecies that must be fulfilled. For God cannot lie. So this is why we study prophecy. Because we say, Lord, show us what these things are so that we can show the people what's happening and can tell them that certainly you're coming soon. And I have been studying this Bible for almost 40 years, looking for what else needs to happen, Brother Melvin. And I'm telling you, for the rapture, I can't find nothing. I can't find nothing. Nothing could, nothing, there's nothing there to stop him but only God's grace. And that is coming to a point where he's going to say enough is enough. And I think right now Jesus may be already upon his white horse, saddled up and ready to go, ready to go and rapture the church. He's going to come, folks, like a thief in the night when we least expect it. In an hour you're not even prepared. But you will be saved because of your grace in God. But the world will not expect it. The world will not know it. Even the church won't expect it. We will not even know it. He, if he came right now, we would say, whoa. I thought it was close, but not that close. I had one guy tell me one time I was preaching. He said, Pastor Begley, you started preaching. You started telling people how that this could be their last day. This might be your last service. And I did. I was preaching that. This could be your last altar call. This can, and it really could be. And I even said, I said, there may be someone here that this is your last service. Don't leave here without Jesus. Now listen to this. A man sitting in the back row over at Blue Sea Baptist Church came and got up and went to the altar and prayed. He was saved, but he went to the altar and prayed. And he got up and he said, Pastor Begley, I just want to make sure that I got it all under the blood. He went home and died that afternoon. He did. Now, I didn't know that was going to happen. He didn't know it was going to happen. And, I, you know, look, he probably was saved no matter if he came up or not. I don't know. But I know this much. God was speaking to his heart, and he wanted to be sure that he knew. There's people today who have never given their life to Christ. They've never called on the name of Jesus. They're just hoping and waiting it out. I'm going to wait and see how things go before I make a decision. I'm just going to wait it out, Pastor Melvin, see what happens. Folks, there's not much more to happen is what I'm telling you. There's really not. And so I was looking at the word. Here's what it said. Matthew 24, verse 40 said, Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at 
the meal. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Amen? And so the Lord is saying, be ready, for in an hour you think not, he cometh. And the Bible says also in Matthew 24, 22, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. This is important. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, God has set a time when he plans on ending it because he's the God of perfection. See, whenever he's created the, the feast, he set it up so that Jesus would be crucified on the Passover, making him the Passover lamb. He set it up so that when his body was in the tomb, it, had no, it would see no corruption, that he would be the feast of unleavened bread. He set it up so that the day he rose from the grave was the feast of the first fruits, making him the first fruits of the resurrection. He set it up that on the day of Pentecost, on the 50th day, a day of freedom and jubilee, that he would send the Holy Ghost promise down and would fill them with the fire of God at the day of Pentecost. And it was Christ that sent them because he said, if I go not away, the comforter cannot come, but I go away that I may send you the comforter. Can you say amen? John said, uh, listen, uh, John said, uh, I indeed baptize you with water, but there comes one after me that was preferred before me whose shoe latchets I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. He said, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Can you say amen? So there's no doubt he's the Messiah. Only thing I could say, well, we got one scripture that does say that he would shorten the days. That maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't, Maybe he has to end time sooner than he wanted to because, because of us, because he cares about us, and he hears those cries under the altar. I don't know. That's why nobody knows the day or the hour. But we can definitely see the day approaching. We're in the season. We're in what's called the fig tree generation. We're in the last days. There's no question about it. That's only a question of when. And it's only a question of who will be ready to meet the Lord. Now, what happens when that happens? Well, look what it says in verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Amen? All we know is this. We, all we know is we don't know when our Lord is coming. That's all I know. I don't know when he's coming. But I can see the day approaching in 1 Thessalonians 4, the Bible says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Praise God. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Can you say amen? If you've ever, you know, if when you're in an airplane and you're up there flying up there in the clouds, I can't help but look out the window at the puffy clouds and I start thinking, this is what it's going to be like. When he comes, we're going to be caught up to be with him in the clouds, in the air. We're going to be caught up right up in here. And, and, <laughs> and I, th I get thinking, well, what if he came right now? I'm already up here, praise God. It'll be a good time. But certainly, when he comes, we are getting ready for him. We're looking for him. I'm not, I'm, I'm looking for him. I mean, it's sort of like this. It's sort of like during the, uh, during the feast of uh, Passover when they, they always have somebody, send somebody out to look for if Elijah's coming. Okay, they always send one out after the meal. Send one out to see. Is Elijah coming? He comes back and reports. Is he coming? Is he coming? Tell us. I'm here, folks, today. That's the way we are. We're looking every day. Is he coming? Is he coming? He's coming soon. It's time to get our family saved. It's time to get our children and our grandchildren and our friends and our neighbors. It's time to tell people about Freedom Fellowship. It's time to start passing out cards and telling folks, you ought to get over here. There's something happening. There's something going on under the tent. There's something good going on. There's good people gathering for a good reason, and they're getting ready to go to a good place. Can you say amen? <laughs> Woo, glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's get, let's get rapture ready. And the Bible said in John 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, 
believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, Jesus said, I would have told you, but I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, amen, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So these days will be shortened. And so I think to myself, God, why would you shorten the days? He said, because of their iniquity, because of the unbelief. I'm going to have to end it sooner than I want to because it says there'd be no flesh saved. So I thought to myself, how could there no flesh be saved? You mean couldn't be born again or do you mean couldn't live? Well, right now we know that nuclear annihilation could pretty well wipe out most of the world. We know another pandemic could do devastation. We know right now that there uh, the, the famines and droughts and different types of pestilences could bring such catastrophe on the earth. So there's so many reasons that God could say, I'm going to end it early. But his number one reason would be because of you, the saints of God. He's going to come for us because he loves us. He's going to come for those that are in the grave who died in Christ. He wants them to be raised in his likeness. And I'm here to say now, this is a glorious, glorious time to be a Christian. This is really the greatest time of the church age is right now. We have been so blessed that God let us live to be part of the last generation. We have, we have been given such a blessing, such a, such a touch from him that all we have to do now is walk in that anointing, walk in that love, walk in that power. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, no man would light a candle and put it under a bushel, but he puts it on a candlestick and he gives his light to all that are in the house, Jesus said. I'm here to say, I believe there may be some here that aren't saved who need to become rapture ready. Today, you can do that. Yesterday, Israel Hall baptized two people. Yesterday, they came to get baptized. And that's going to happen. It's going to happen from time to time. People are going to just keep coming, keep showing up. Other times, it'll be in another way. But I'm here to tell you right now that Jesus is coming back. And somewhere, somewhere in this earth, the last person's going to get saved. Somewhere, that last one's going to get in. I don't know who it is or where it is. But I know this, I don't want to be left behind, do you? You know, it's so true, folks. I mean, really, it's so true. Jesus is coming back. He's even at the door. We see the signs of his returning everywhere. You know, I thought about what the scripture said, uh, what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We mentioned it in the message. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. We won't hinder those that have died in the Lord. But instead, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Are you serious? And then... Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet them in, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I mean, what a celebration. What an anticipation of the coming of the Lord. And what a reunion when the dead in Christ and us that are alive and remain are rapture ready. I am ready you do not want to be left behind. You do. You know what? What we do? We're building a brand new sanctuary down at Freedom Fellowship, and when this is completed, while in construction, we're going to put several thousand Bibles into the walls, and we're, they're going to be hidden into the walls for a reason. We believe that when the Lord comes back. There will be many left behind, and they will not know what to do or where to turn. I'm going to leave sermon notes about the coming of the Lord and the things that are about to happen in the prophets. I'm going to leave tape series and CDs and DVDs right inside the walls, along with all the Bibles. Why? Because we know that multiple millions of people will be left behind. You don't want to be left behind. 
You want to be rapture ready. Folks, it's serious. I'll be right back in just a moment. The chaos starts with the release of the angel of the abyss, known to the Hebrews as Abaddon, and to the Greeks as Apollyon, which means destroyers. The sixth angel sounds his trumpet, unleashing the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates, who have been prepared for this moment to slay a third of all mankind. Pastor Paul Begley explains what happens next in his latest release, Revelation 9-11. It's available on DVD or download. Find it at paulbegleyprophecy.com. You know, it's the greatest opportunity right now in history. The last altar call is going to be given. I don't know when it is. Could be tonight. Could be right now while you're watching this broadcast. I have no idea, but I know it's close. Matter of fact, one of the things God told me nearly 40 years ago, he said, Paul, the reason people aren't being saved is nobody ever asked them. I'm going to ask you tonight. And for those of you who are saved, I want you to get yourself fully prepared and rapture ready. And that meant, in other words, get on your wedding garment, okay? Get things, hey, you've got hard feelings. Get this stuff patched up. Get things fixed up with people. Because if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you've not seen? Let's get serious about this thing. This is why a lot of people will be left behind because they will not, they will not have prepared. And so this is the hour to do that. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know, Lord, that I want to be right with you. I know I want to be worthy to escape the hour of temptation that's coming on the earth. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing them to you. And I'm calling upon Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world. I want to be saved, washed in the blood, filled with the Spirit, and my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be rapture ready. So right here, right now, by faith, I call on the name of Jesus. In Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. You know something? This, I'm so serious when I tell you about that tape series of Rapture Ready. Get it. I'm, I'm making it available to you this week. I'm serious. Get it. Order it, watch it, and give it to someone else so that they can prepare themselves for this great event. The greatest event in the history of the world is about to take place. And the world is not rapture ready. I'll see you next week on the coming Apocalypse. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website.